Hello dear customizators, so in this episode I wanted to talk to you about a new machine I bought and it's a CNC milling machine from Isel and a couple of last days I've been working on it and I've been trying to get it going. I did some things already, didn't record it, basically made all the power to it to be able to power it up. I made this stand for the monitor from the TV stand. I'm also making a stand for the keyboard. So this should go like this and then the keyboard should mount right to this and should look something like this. So really nice. At the moment I have the spindle off the machine. The spindle is right here and I want to try and measure how precise is the machine. So I put this measurement tool and I'm going to measure the table on all points to see if there is uh, any deviation. And for the future I plan to upgrade the machine with this spindle which is uh, pretty huge compared to the original one. So a huge upgrade. As you can see comparison and also this spindle has a quick tool changer and you can quickly change the tools and the CNC machine should be able to change the tool by itself. This is something I will do in the future upgrade. So first thing turning it on and this is how the software looks and what I need to do now is to release this emergency off. Click this to turn on the machine. And then I need to click reset right here. So now the machine is ready to be activated. And now I can control the axis with this arrow keys. As you can see, it moves in all directions. If I want to move it faster, I can click shift key and then arrow keys to move it faster. With page up, page down, I can move uh, the spindle up and down. Yeah, basically with this, I can uh, do these simple operations of measuring this table. So that's what I'm going to do now to see how flat is this table compared to the CNC axis. All right, so the first thing I did was uh, measuring the end points of the table. So I moved the axis to all four corners and centered the table. And this is actually a vacuum table that I bought that I should fit to the machine and it should hold the pieces on the machine surface by vacuum. So pretty expensive table. It was 1000 euros for this. And then I still have to buy a vacuum pump. And actually I do have a vacuum pump already below, but I still didn't connect it to the table. So this is the engine compartment area for the machine and I still need to connect everything but for now I would just like to mount this table yeah I centered it now I know where it needs to go now I'll remove it and I will measure the points where the table will be fixated to but before I move it I'm just going to mark where the table sits so I know all the points I need to measure to make the table super flat Okay, so now I can lower the table down until I get a measurement. Now I can reset the measurement tool to zero and I can see the difference in the height of the table. So this side looks pretty good, 0.02 millimeters. I can see these other sides. So we can see that in this direction it goes a bit uh, upwards. Actually it's going down so the table is lower in this part and then it's going back to zero again. Not a huge difference here. And then it goes up. So I do have some differences in the table.
not as flat as I would like it to be so I probably should do something about it so the table is uh, 0.1 millimeters lower here so my idea is just to put some tape here and for this I have this captain tape that is exactly 0.1 millimeters and uh, if I put it here and this, the table will be fixated at this point hopefully it will help keeping the vacuum table level so this is just my idea I don't know if this will work let's just see so I had 0.1 and now if I return the spindle back I have 0.15 okay so this is actually 0.05 millimeters thickness so with this I can level the table on all uh, the mounting points for the vacu vacuum table as this is going to be such a huge and long process I'm probably not going to record it and just going to continue when I'm finished with the result and while I was doing this these final pieces were 3d printed and now I can finally mount my keyboard and after some fine adjustment this is how it works nice all right so this is where i'm at now i think this is now done i have practically the difference around 0.2.3 top all right so off to the next upgrade so the problem is the fans on the machines that are cooling the cnc motor drives are on all the time this makes it difficult for me to record videos for you obviously so i went for this upgrade and bought this speed controller from ebay so basically this is just a pvm fan controller that will control the speed of fans okay so i'm at the back of my machine now these are the controllers for the motors and these are the 24 volt fans that are cooling them and I simply disconnected these wires from the fans and put them through this uh, PVM controller this is the power supply for the fans 24 volt and now I suppose this is the first start I hope it will work so this is the fan from this that started and stopped right now this is the spindle controller fans are off and if i heat it up with my finger the fan starts to accelerate and I, if i heat it up even more with the lighter they are ramping up And now they are working 100%. And if I put it here to detect the temperature of the radiator, they will start to ramp down. And I think they finally will be shutting off. Nice! All right, so it's connected. I secure this just with some cable ties. And for now, I just set it to high sensitivity. So now they are off. Even the slightest increase in the temperature will turn the fans on. And when the machine is working, it is noisy anyway, so they can be on. Okay, so I'm here now and I think you can hear me a little bit better now, now that the fan noise is gone. And if you want to compare, just check the first part of this video and uh, if you made it this far in this video it means you are really a CNC fan so I need to congratulate you on that you are just like me very big fan of machining and before we go to machining there's just one more thing I want to do and it has to do with this fourth axis and uh, yeah let's see the problem I found with this axis and how I dealt with it so the problem was that this axis had some play in it as you can see right here and to deal with this I had to find out what is happening beneath the cover so after removing it I found out that the belt was not tensioned enough and it was like this pulley for the belt was not quite correct in size 
and uh, to deal with this I just removed the motor and I just made some slots out of these holes so I could tension the motor properly and after tensioning it the play was gone and I guess that was all that it took to alleviate this problem. Alright and now on to machining. So this was the first time I got to use the vacuum table. So this is the stencil I made uh, by 3D printing. And this is for me to more easily visualize what I need to cut out from this aluminum piece. And this also enables me to see where the cuts will be. And I am able to position these rubbers that will hold this part on the vacuum table. So you need to put the rubbers where the CNC rotor will not be milling. So it doesn't cut into the rubber. So I just thought this 3D printing method could be a cool method to achieve this. And here you can see the hole on the vacuum table that will be used to suck the air from this part of the table. And this is the aluminium block out of which I'm going to mill out this part. And again I can use the 3D printed stencil to find the center. Of course this can be done using the 3D probe for the CNC but at this time I still don't have it. So as you can see there's a hole in the center of the 3D printed part and I need to align this hole with the milling bit and then I can center the aluminium part to make sure that I have enough material to cut out the part. And now I just need to screw this vacuum tube in the right place and now you can see the vacuum in action. So it's holding the part pretty well, but there is one problem using the vacuum table. If you want to make the cutout all the way through the material, like I want with this part, so I cannot just vacuum the part straight down to the table and I need to use some kind of spacer to offset the part from the table. And my first idea was to 3D print a thin layer of plastic, as you can see here. So the plastic is 0.3 millimeters thick and this should be enough for the milling bit not to touch the table or so I hope. So I put the aluminum part back again, center everything and it was time for my first try so let's just see how it went. And as you can see it's a major fail and mostly it's because of the wrong setting of the depth that the milling bit will go and also the wrong speed of the spindle. And as you could have seen the part move and this was also due to these 3D printed spacers that I made and the problem is that plastic just does not provide enough friction. So my second idea was to use sandpaper and I just glued two pieces together so I have the rough side of the paper on both sides and this should provide enough friction to hold the part in place. I also adjusted the CNC program a bit so that the CNC mill doesn't go that deep into the part. So let's try again. So for now it's going good, as you can see I had to close the door because the amount of chips that was going out was really terrible. So for now everything is going great and I really enjoyed watching the machine work for the first time. And uh, I was thinking this is going to be it, the part is going to be successfully milled out, but then this happened. So the part move and I think there are several factors why this happened. Uh, I think the first one was that I was uh, cooling this part with the special solvent for the CNC and eventually this uh, cooling solution found its way to the sandpaper I glued together and basically dissolved it so the friction was gone. The second thing I think uh, did not help is that the spindle speed was still not good and the feed rate was probably not good. I also noticed while editing this video that my compressor turned on just as uh, the spindle slowed down so probably the voltage drop from the compressor turning on caused the spindle to lose a bit of RPM so that caused the part to slip down. In the end I was able to save this part because the CNC went almost all the way and the material that uh, was left was so thin that I was able to basically rip it off with my hands. So I'm ending this video with the failure but you know 
you learn as you go and i also hope you could learn something from this video and from some methods i use to create this part anyways there will be more videos about this cnc milling machine and upgrades i'm going to make there will be also a lot more parts and uh, hopefully more successful use of the machine so definitely stay tuned and stay customized